Hello, I'm Richard Vogue, the Bull Explorer, on another investigation with the lovely Julia. Hello, Julia. Hello, Richard. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, good. We are in Cowfold today. We thought we'd have a look at another village. We haven't done a village for a while. No. And um, hoping that it's going to be reasonably quiet because it's locked down and we're just doing our exercise, just so you know. And Julia is the one person out of my family that I'm allowed to nominate just get in there all nice and clear. So, Julia, behind us, yes. we are at um, the church. St Peter's Church. St Peter's Church. You've been doing lots of research. I wouldn't say lots, but I've been doing some research. Fantastic. <laughs> so tell me about St Peter's Church. Well, the oldest parts are the chancel and the nave of the 13th century, and then the tower is about um, 15th century. Um, and inside, isn't there, um, we can't go in the churches no. at the moment, unless it's just for private prayer, but isn't there um, a famous brass? I remember looking yes. on the, the local history website and there's a famous brass. There are a few treasures in there, but the brass is one of them. It is of um, Thomas Nelland. I'm Thomas. not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But, um, and it's about eight foot long. And I think it was, it's under the carpet, but it's, I yeah, don't think you can. Away underneath yeah, because people used to come far and wide to do brass rubbings. Um, yeah, I think also there was some um, like treasure hunters were trying to take pieces of it. Oh really? Yeah. That's not so good, is it? No. Well, shall we go up and have a look at the church and have a look yeah. round, and then we'll go and have a look round Cowfold itself. Sounds good to me. The graveyard itself is quite interesting because it's got um, quite a lot of yew trees which I notice are all in bud. Well, you know, there's red berries and things. Yeah, all in fruit. In fruit, I beg your pardon. Um, we're coming up to the porch here, which as you can see, the gates are completely locked up, but it's a beautiful porch. It's very elaborate gates. Sorry, say again. Very elaborate gates, they're beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful gates. Um, and then you've got the, uh, the 13th century tower in the west, of course. The interesting thing about this tower is that it's got a turret on it. Hexagonal turret. Sorry, octagonal turret. This is the west entrance here, which it's a bit dark there, but um, I think this goes across into what I believe um, at one time was allotments. I don't know if the allotments are still there, but when I was looking on old maps before coming here, I think there were sort of church allotments or the ground was owned by the church. I'm not 100% sure on all of that, but let's go and get a view from the south, where the sun is shining. We just moved down to the west side of the graveyard here, and um, we noticed this fence with all these carvings in. Yeah. Um, now, I've never seen that before in a churchyard. It's quite um, unusual. And I think it's either names of families or the farm or places. places or that have um, contributed. Contributed to. Yeah, the church. I mean, it, they, they look like they've been carved quite recently, but mm. um, maybe that's a bit of a tradition here in Cowsfold. Maybe. Who knows? Oh, and we should say Cowsfold, the name. Um, did look this up in um, a book on Sussex place names. Yeah. And it just said, uh, oh yeah, the name is self-explanatory, which presumably means it was a fold or an area where cattle was kept. Yeah, I mean... For one of the manor houses, presumably, in the area. I mean, I, I, the way I think of it is, I mean, fold could be field or felled, and cow, either cow or cull, could have been where they culled them, I don't know. No, I, yeah... If anyone I, does know, please let yeah, us know. Yeah, let us know. Um, but I think there were big manor houses around, so this may have been just a, a holding place for cattle, who knows. But behind us... I don't know whether these are the oldest houses, but there's a beautiful run of um, picturesque houses here. Um, I think they're known as Margaret houses, named after a woman called Margaret in 1929, who bought one of them. And it 
they're nicer this side to see them because they're quieter because otherwise you're on the the, road. the A272 um, road and it's very very busy even during lockdown mm. yeah um, and I believe that one of them and I'm not sure which was the original poor house oh, right. or the old workhouse so fascinating to see them but I think they date from something like 16 hundreds early 1600s and they've been you know renovated and all that mm -hmm. over the over the time i must admit one of them is up for sale oh is it was yeah no it is and uh i've had a quick look around on the air <laughs> you sent me the link and it was uh was it 299,000, just under 300,000. um quaint looking house though yeah quite narrow but yeah very very character i like that characterful uh, yeah Characterful. What is it? What does that mean? Characterful. Um, I like the, on those websites now that you can go and check out some houses even after they've been sold. You can check out yeah. how it looks on the inside. It must be great for historians to, to you know, without actually without knocking on someone's door. Going, yeah. Excuse me, can I come in and can have, I have a look around? Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> so um, that's the parade of shops. Now, shall we get head back? Because all the time I've been to. Calfold. I've just gone through it. It's got two roundabouts. Mm. It's got four roads, north and south, and it gets quite busy. But should we go and have a look at that? Come on. Julia, Richard. look at this uh, multi um, Trunk. trunked. I nearly called it a multi stemmed. They're multi trunked beach. Before you know, you always think of beech trees as being a single trunk with lots of um, branches coming out of it, but I've never seen one quite like this. I expect this from um, a, a hazel or something like that. Mm. Makes you wonder what caused it to do this. Yeah, but uh, a beautiful tree. Sorry, we were on our way to the <laughs> high street, there's, but... There's lots of inosculation going on here. Oh, I, I, <laughs> what does that mean? It's where the branches kind of grow it and kind of meld almost. Ah, and oh yeah. You can see there. Oh, in the back there. They're sort of fused together, haven't they? Yeah. There's quite several places in, in, in there. Well, it's not surprising really. Several trunks growing together. You're going to get crossover. Yeah, crossover, but not crossed. <laughs> right, to the road. To the road. Going through the lich gate. I'll open the gate for you, lovely Julia. Thank you, kindly, lovely Richard. It says on the sign there there are Commonwealth graves. But it's a lovely lich gate, as you can see. And I think, according to um, old maps, and I looked at some old maps, there used to be a forge here. Although that building might have been the forge. Um, it's very difficult to gauge. The other thing, looking on old maps, there's a place opposite us that looks like it ought to be a pub. Because it was a pub. Yeah. Do you know what it was called? The Red Lion. The Red Lion. And I have gone around these roundabouts so many times and seen the Red Lion. But actually it's not the Red Lion now because... It's a co-op. It's the co-op. But we've actually gone in there on the way to somewhere else. Yeah. I think when we did a walk at, um, at uh, St. Leonard's Forest, wasn't it? I think so. And we've gone in and grabbed some quick supplies because we were hungry, as we're often hungry. <laughs> and um, we didn't think about it. But yeah, that was the Red Lion. Yeah. It's just it's a... Quite... Sorry, it's noisy. Very noisy. Sorry about that. It's also quite sad. I mean, it had a really lovely, large um, pub garden like two or three houses on it. And mention about the Google thing. Oh yeah, Google. <laughs> From Street View, you can see the pub. You go into the car park and it's suddenly a co-op with houses. Really bizarre. Really it's like bizarre. some weird time warp thing. Yeah. Um, let's do the, no, sorry. No, let's sorry. not do the time warp. <laughs> This rather splendid house is just on the corner. It's the other side of one of the houses that we saw in the churchyard. But what I, I like is the shutters. You just don't see many houses with shutters on anymore. The noise of the traffic is pretty drowning here. I don't know how 
people can put up with it when these great big lorries like that are thundering through. This is um, the Horsham to Brighton Road, really. Not the London to Brighton Road, but it's a sort of alternative down to Shoreham, through from Hand Cross down to um, Henfield and all those sort of places. But we're, we're at the heart where the two roundabouts are. And this house here is particularly beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's another little row of cottages. Or well, might have been one cottage once, but it's now a tandoori which seems a bit of a shame, but better be a good one. Look at the size of the chimneys. I always think, you know, when you see big, thick, wide chimneys, you get a gauge of how old a property is. Mm. Yeah, it's and it's got Horsham stone on it, so that also gives you an indication. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was funny. That was great. <laughs> As we were filming, a lady popped her head out the door and we thought, uh-oh, we're going to be towed to, yeah. to go off. Except she was on the phone and she had a big grin on her face and we were like, okay. So she, she, go on. She was really excited to see him because she recognised him. Oh. Apparently she's been following you for quite some time. Yes, yeah. so that was really nice. So we, uh, we asked her a little bit about the house even though she was on uh, the, the phone. phone. Um, in the window, hadn't noticed before, all the lovely teddies. Lots of lovely vintage looking teddies. Which if you come back at Christmas are going to be dressed up for Christmas, which is fantastic. Awesome. Um, the cottage dates to 1570 and her name's Mary Wilson. So Mary, if you're watching, thank you so much. And the end bit is the tandoori. Yes, not just the, this bit, not the whole lot. Not the whole I'm lot. really relieved about. Yeah. Because that cottage she has looks amazing. Opposite us is the uh, the town hall. Yeah, town hall which was opened in 1896. Ah, yes, it looks a very yeah. modern Victorian, as yeah, in was, late Victorian. I was going to say it was opened for Queen Victoria's um, jubilee. Oh, was it? From this side, it looks very much town hally, but from the other side, it's almost uh, domesticated, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Which is which is quite strange. Mm. The interesting thing about it is. It's built on what was an old saw pit owned by a company called Fowlers, which was a building company in the village at the time. And, um, and the, the gentleman, what's the gentleman's name? Frederick Duquesne Godman. He, he had made a deal with Fowlers to swap this, uh, this patch of land, this site, with another one of his sites down the road a little bit more. Oh, right. And um, so they, they did that and they also got contracted to build the town hall, ah. the village hall, sorry. So yeah, they did well out of it then. Yeah, I think they did. I think we should um, head up to the green because um, it's a bit more peaceful. Yeah. Wow, this has been here a while, hasn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. Well, Julia, we've only really probably only touched the surface of Cowfold. Um, but we've certainly enjoyed our little trip round. Absolutely. And little Joseph has uh, had a bit of fun as well. Although um, behind us is the little park. So no doubt he'll have a little bit of a chance to run around, won't you, Joe? You'll yeah, like that. I will. Yeah. Well, obviously, if you live in Cowfold, you'll know we missed out a million things and there's more history. But most people, it seems, just drive right through, which is a bit of a shame. It is. Um, little Joe's waving. He has learned to wave, hasn't he? He has. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Uh, do support the channel so we can um, keep bringing these videos to you and we'll do the best we can. Do a thumb up, Joe. If you can do a thumb up, I mean, put a thumbs up. That really helps as well with the old algorithm. But until next time, thank you, Julia. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for bringing us along. It's been all good fun and we'll see you on another one. Till then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.